uh, Chris Lemos. Oh, yes, we are on number 14. Times three minutes and questions. Yeah. Yes, Chris. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Lemos. I'm a resident of Stratford. I'm also a firearms instructor, a range safety officer, and I'm also an executive member of the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. I'm here in opposition to most of the bills today. Let's start with SB 1076. That bill does absolutely nothing to actually reduce gun violence, and it's so insidious, I'm sure, I know most of the people here have been talking about this already. Uh, so I'm going to move on. Obviously, I strongly oppose that one. SB 299, that's the communication between police departments. My issue with this bill is it should be covering all mass casualty events, not just active shooter events. It really doesn't matter if it's a shooter, a bomb, uh, a major fire. All the departments should have communication between them. It shouldn't just be because of an active shooter. So that needs some work. Uh, SB 505 is the minimum age to purchase a rifle or a long gun. People aged 18 to 21 are old enough and responsible enough to join the military. They're old enough to go into law enforcement and handle real assault rifles. They're old enough and responsible enough to vote for you, the people who make the laws, and are old enough to be liable for their actions if they break those laws. Why shouldn't they be allowed to own a hunting rifle or a target rifle or a shotgun? Uh, SB 710, permit for gun shows. That bill is unnecessary and arbitrary. The gun shows must already adhere to local zoning insurance regulations for public events as all, well as state and federal firearm laws. The bill adds an undefined and subjective standard of suitability. There's 169 towns in Connecticut. That's 169 different definitions of suitable. Not needed. SB 1071 is additional funding for criminals of the injuries compensation fund. This bill unfairly taxes the one segment of industry, one segment of industry that's already taxed on multiple levels. Will we also be taxing knife, bat, and automobile manufacturers and dealers? The firearms industry directly and indirectly employs and supports a large number of residents, you've heard from the manufacturers and some of the employees. Do we really want to enact yet another reason to drive those jobs out of Connecticut? I believe that imposes a $25 tax or $10 tax on every firearm manufactured in Connecticut or sold in Connecticut. Uh, lastly is SB 6162. That's for mental health. That's the first one you've actually had that does something. And while I agree with the sentiment that keeping weapons away from mentally ill people is a desirable thing, we have to balance it against the right to self-defense guaranteed in the state and federal constitution. I don't think disarming an entire household because one person voluntarily sought mental health strikes that balance. In fact, I feel such a law would discourage family members from getting a person help early for fear of losing their rights. The next Lance, Nancy Lanza may be even less inclined to seek the proper help for her Adam if that bill became law. That's about all I have. Thanks very much, um, Chris. Questions? Um, 